first, Rangers at Carolina. Puck will drop at 7 o'clock Eastern time, 4 o'clock Pacific. And this series continues to trend uh, with, with the Hurricanes winning at home, as we know. They have not lost a home game uh, either to Boston or to the Rangers. I, I did, but from a Rangers perspective, they did something that even Boston couldn't do, and that's get ahead of, of Carolina. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but... Uh, when you get when you get ahead and force the home team to play from behind, that's a tremendous advantage. And I think the Rangers, I mean, they, what they were three minutes away from from pulling that game one out. So I'm not not running to the window to play Carolina just because they're playing at in, in Raleigh. Let's see if that that game one performance and really a pretty good game two performance as well. Let's see if that gives them some confidence tonight. Let's take a look at the number. Carolina, big favorite as you would expect at home, minus a dollar sixty. They opened up a dollar forty-five, so plenty of money coming in on Carolina. Five and a half under, minus a dollar forty-five. That's gone up from a dollar thirty-five. So clearly, the public likes Carolina and the under. And I get the under because you know, we haven't seen an over yet. Uh, Shesterkin will be the starting goaltender against Ante Ranta, of course, which will likely be the goaltending matchup throughout the series, uh, barring injury. And as we mentioned, Carolina is back home where they've won all six of their postseason games this season. And all the talk that I hear is about how the Hurricanes had plenty of chances to win at MSG. Uh, that is always doused with the fact that they certainly they didn't win. That, that's number one. And, and number two, People love to bring up the fact that, you know, Carolina's shot advantage. I talked to a guy yesterday who runs analytics for the NHL, and he said that shot advantage is such a, although it does tell you where the puck is most of the time, it's kind of a, a, a you know, a layman's coursey number. Uh, but that, to me, it, it's never been the story. And we've seen it many, many times where teams have outshot their opponents, and, and that has just not been the key to success. And remember, again, shots on goal looks impressive, but it's where the shots are coming from. And these shots are coming from the perimeter, and these big-time goaltenders like Shosturkin or Mark, Markstrom or Vasilevsky, if they have plenty of uh, space to actually watch the puck come in, you're not getting beat. Uh, the only one that's getting beat from you know 260 feet or 160 feet is Mike Smith. So th that's not a that's not a factor to me, and I don't put too much into it. Uh, although a lot of people like to bring that up. Uh, as far as Shesterkin is concerned for the Rangers, he you look at his numbers, and again we talk about shots on goal. The more shots he faces, the better he is. And why is that important? Well. Because when, when goaltenders face more shots, they can they they take the off the offensive and a transition can be quicker. They are the, the first line of defense, uh, obviously on defense, but they're also the first ones usually to start transition. And uh, a lot of a lot of times when you get more shots on goal, you get caught deep into the zone, get get caught in that slot area, and then there's a breakout going the other way. So that's a lot of times why the shot selection or the shot total is not always a reflection of who's going to win the game. Uh, and he's allowed just, going back to Shesterkin, he's allowed just five goals in his last 122 shots. That equates to a save percentage of 96%. His counterpart, of course, Antti Ranta, has been extremely good. Uh, there were times that I thought that the Hurricanes could have played a little bit better in front of him. So when we're just talking about netminders, I love how the Rangers are playing in front of Shesterkin, which they've done well all season long. Uh, they've also relied on him a lot, too. And I think they're better when Shesterkin faces a lot of shots. So to me, I don't automatically go the other way and say, well, you know, the Rangers are not playing well defensively. Uh, the media always is leading you to believe, I mean, everything that I have read this morning about how great Rod Brendamore is and how – how what a genius he's he was because he moved Andre uh, Shevchenkov to that second line. He kept Sebastian Aho in that in that first line, and, and you know people are saying, oh, he's he's taking the offense and he's really spreading it around, and it makes Carolina more dangerous. He did these moves because Shevchenkov was non-existent on the offensive end. I mean, they are very at this point they're very top heavy, and the pro, and the difference between other teams that are top heavy that are having success, like the Edmonton Oilers, is that just 
there's no superstars. Sebastian Ajo is probably their biggest superstar that they have. And if they can shut him down, I think the Rangers have a real good chance of winning this game tonight. There's been so much made on, again, on the total shot count. Uh, of course, the Flames dominated that. We're going to see, I'm going to, I think tonight, this is what you're going to see. We're going to see an effort to take Sebastian Ajo out of, out of the equation and what the, the amount of room that he has. And, and that has been huge. He's had a lot of room out there. And without the room to create or create a clear path to the slot, I think you, you cut the head off of that top line. I think the Hurricanes should feel very lucky to be knotted up at two at this point. Uh, the Rangers could have easily have won game one. Like we said, they were ahead until the last few minutes. So tonight's official selection on this play or on this game let us not forget that the Rangers have owned the Hurricanes over the past 51 meetings. And I know that goes back a long time. But when you establish a culture, one team over another, that does factor in even though the players do change from time to time. In the last 51 meetings, the Rangers have won 35 of them. That does go back, like I said, a little bit. But the Rangers will have no anxiety going into Raleigh and playing in front of that crowd. They have had success in Raleigh before. They've had success in this series in, in Carolina. So it's not going to be a situation like the Bruins, who had very little success against the Hurricanes this year. The Rangers believe that they can win there. In addition, the Rangers are on a 25-9 and run when their opponents score two goals or less in their previous game. Plus money for me is too good to pass up. So we're going to take the Rangers plus $1.40 for our first selection.